like all my projects, I'm never sure that they will succeed. Though in the past I made a properly working uh, one tube amplifier and that's also the aim of this video. I want to show some considerations, only ideas by the way. I'm not sure uh, that I'm going to finish this project in a su successful way though I'm quite sure that I can finish it in a successful way. Anyway, it's about a one tube amplifier. Uh, I first uh, searched in my junk box for all kinds of tubes and this is a tube that I want to use. The ECL80 European tube. It's a triode, pentode, that's very important. The triode part of the tube is the preamplifier, and the pentode part of the tube is the end amplifier. And I'm on my YouTube channel you find a completely free document about how to make a simple tube amplifier, and that's the approach that I'm going to use in the coming days. Anyway, um, there are also other tubes. This is a more powerful tube, PCL82, so 82 means a higher number, a higher number means more power. When you look on the data sheets on the World Wide Web or in data tube, data sheet books, you can see that and P, uh, that only means that the filament voltage is higher. So E always means 6 volt filament voltage. P means, uh, as far as I know, 18 volts filament voltage and they were always used in old school 1970s, 1960s uh, analog TV uh, units and they were, uh, that's the reason why they uh, adapted the, say, the, the filament resistance so that they could uh, connect all the filament resistances in series and uh, that had to mean that over every filament um, there had to be a voltage drop of approximately say 18 volts or so. Correct me if I'm wrong, no problem with that. So this is a PC uh, tube but, and it is a more powerful tube but it has in fact more or less the same properties the ECL80 can uh, when I look at the data sheet can give out approximately 1.5 watt. This is all old stock and perhaps interesting to tell I think this tube is not healthy any longer. It's brown. So I think the vacuum is more or less gone. Anyway, perhaps interesting to show again how the ECL tube, ECL80 works. This data sheet is of the World Wide Web. It's a data sheet from Philips from the 1950s or so, perhaps the 1960s. And here you see the uh, how that tube works. This is the triode part, preamplifier. This is the pentode part that makes the output level. And there are a few grids here, grid 1, uh, sorry, grid 3, grid 2, grid 1. There is a common cathode and F means the filament, that is the glow element that makes the electrons emerge out of the cathode when it is heated. Pink connections are here. You can also find exactly the same on the World Wide Web, but anyway. There is an anode from the triode that's here. There is an anode from the pentode that's on pin 6 that's here. From the pentode. There are a few grids in that pentode part and there's only one grid at the triode preamplifier part and that's this grid. Uh, well, what is the anode voltage approximately? 170 to 200 volts and the 
altijd always important. Uh, here is talked about the voltage to create one, but I will perhaps when the uh, when this whole project succeeds, I will tell more about that. Uh, but in general, we need in the in the preamplifier part a negative grid voltage to make the tube work. Perhaps also in the pentode part. I'm going to study that and there's more information in the book, not a book, a leaflet on the Lulu website where I have published how to make a simple tube amplifier. So the negative grid voltage is uh, essential for the properly working of the tube. Say it's a kind of bias voltage to make that such a tube can amplify the sine waves, the audio, uh, the audio um, sine waves, the music signal or the speech signal, etc., in a proper way. Uh, well, there are perhaps more things to tell. Of course, this is the the frame that I made. I made it simply on a piece of wood. I will cover the piece, the back side of that piece of wood with tin plate made from steel cans, could be beer cans. Uh, no aluminium, is, is aluminium doesn't work. Steel cans and then glue it to the underside, uh, pinch with a few pins uh, that um, uh, that it is mounted in a fierce way, etc. etc. But the glue is most important. I always used, like I told in many earlier videos, this contact glue, piece of kit in the Netherlands. So smear it out on one side, smear it out on the on the template, uh, let it rest for approximately five minutes or so, and then connect the whole underside of that tube amplifier uh, with that uh, sheet metal. Here is a piece of aluminum. I've made here holes. They are made uh, with uh, a normal drill and they are also made with what we call in the Netherlands a, a top bore. Uh, literally translation is a uh, uh, a tap drill, perhaps that's not a good translation, but anyway, you surely can see what it is all about. Here is here are these holes made, especially the big holes. At first, there is a uh, a drill uh, that's not so not so big in diameter, and then we do use this tap tap drill. Anyway. So, in the future, and I hope that this project will succeed, uh, it could be a simple stereo amplifier with two tubes, two ECL tubes, uh, could be the ECL80, and I have uh, quite a bunch of old, of all these old tubes uh, that I salvaged out of television, uh, television televisions, old school analog televisions out of the 1970s and 80s. So here we have an ECL84 uh, kind of power tube. The ECL84 can give out approximately 3 or perhaps even 5 watts. Uh, when you are looking at old school analog tube circuits, don't be surprised that you find uh, a distortion factor in the order of 10%. Nowadays, 2022, that's quite strange. We have um, audio amplifiers with an, ampli uh, with an uh, distortion factor in the 1000th of range, but does it add to something? Well, 
you can uh, say judge for yourself. Here are the, the switches that I'm going to use. Uh, I will use here when all succeeds. So uh, only one switch here, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And they will only give out more bass boost or uh, uh, perhaps I want to lift up, lift up the high frequencies. Could also be that these two uh, switches are used to lift up the higher frequencies. Anyway, it all depends on how it will work in the future. Uh, how the tubes work, how they are say in a certain way audio response is, how properly they work when I connect to these tubes, say an mp3 player or whatever uh, audio player, a smartphone audio player, etc. etc. Anyway, more ideas about how I want to make it. This will be the front. The tubes will be positioned here. That's a first ID. Um, that's a first ID. They must, must be uh, not too close to each other. Perhaps they can, can influence each other. But there must be a big room here on that plate to the transformers because the transformers they will be mounted here for the high voltage and perhaps a separate transformer for the 6 volts at 300 milliampere. Uh, they have, at least when they are cheap, cheap transformers, they have an enormous magnetic field around them on 50 hertz. And that field can enter through the air into the grid of these two tubes. That means that you hear hum and that is hum that is generated via electromagnetic influences out of the main transformer. There's also another kind of hum and that's the hum that's everywhere where you live. Uh, at least when you live uh, somewhere where there is a mains uh, supply of 230 volt at 50 hertz or 110 volt at 60 hertz, doesn't matter much. Uh, it means that the cables in your room stray out approximately 50 hertz or 60 hertz that can be picked up by the tubes and tubes are extremely sensitive in that respect. Could be that when I make it I have to shield the whole unit here completely with tin plate. And I will use this tin plate for that. It's tin plate out of beer cans and it must be steel, like I told. Uh, there are also perhaps other soft drinks that make their cans out of steel. You can use it. Use a scissor uh, to make these kinds of plates. So, uh, that was more or less all to tell. Um, the say the socket where the tubes uh, are mounted in is here. This is a ceramic socket. I've taken all the pins here <coughs> out. You could easily, at least in this case, uh, take them out, and they were cleaned in this ultrasound bath and here is another socket and there are more pins here they are cleaned first because they are old say from the 1970s and uh, when there there is a bad contact between the socket and the tube uh, you can get problems of uh, creaking sounds etc etc so my camera runs out that was more or less all to tell I hope that this project will succeed. When it doesn't su succeed, no problem with that. At least uh, I've given, say, kind of the best information that I could give when you want to make such a tube circuit, tube amplifier in a very easy way. The most easy way that you can make it.